What is going on investors? Hopefully you guys are doing well out there. It is time to continue our stock battle royal while we take a look at two similar stocks in the same sector that both just recently reported earnings. On today's video, we'll take a look at Uber and we'll also take a look at Lyft. Now, in the case of Uber, this company reported their earnings yesterday. The revenues came in at $5.78 billion. That was 83% year over year growth. They beat expectations by $420 million. Now, initially shares went up by about four or about five percent in the after hours all the way to the top end of the range only to very predictably get rejected and now we're sitting at the middle of a downward channel that this stock has been in for several several months now we'll talk about what this means from a technical perspective it is super crystal clear where both of these companies are trading from a technical perspective it absolutely can be like one of the most easiest ways to learn when you need to buy the stock so if you're out there maybe you already own some uber stock Maybe you would like to own some Uber stock. Maybe you want to know if you need to sell it. This technical setup that both of these stocks are making is literally like the easiest thing to understand. And I will explain it to you on today's show. There are timestamps down below if you want to jump around to the different companies. Now, let's kick things off with Uber. Like we talked about, revenue growth really strong. When you got a $74 billion market cap on $5.7 billion worth of revenue in a quarter, you better have big time revenue growth and this company is delivering on that sense. Now, let's jump over to the financials. One thing I will say I don't like about either of these companies is they're a little finicky. They're they're trying to hide some things in their financials. I think they could be far more straightforward with their financials. Quit doing these adjusted numbers, contribution numbers, non-GAAP things. Just give us the plain numbers, and I'll talk about that as we continue to move forward. This is also why I think these stocks are under pressure because maybe it's the financial geek in me, but I see a lot of just a, a company, a CFO that's trying to hide a lot of stuff underneath the surface of these financials. I'll talk to you that as we walk through these. Now, on the t on the surface though, Uber's doing really nice. Obviously, both of these companies had major, major impacts on their business in 2020 when a lot of things get shut down. They were relied on a lot of tra traffic and people going back and forth to work and those types of things. And obviously, when everybody's staying at home, that's a lot less need for an Uber. But the company did a nice job, and we're referring to Uber here, of transitioning into their delivery business. So this is like Uber Eats and kind of food delivery, but they also did a really nice job of getting into this freight business as well. As you can imagine, it's just exploded over the last year. Look at the growth on that revenue side. So what we're looking at here is gross bookings. You went all the way up to over a billion dollars of gross bookings on that freight side. That's up 245%. The delivery business is continuing to grow as well, up 34%. And we're seeing mobility, which is your traditional Uber ride that you might get on the app. That's up 60 7% and it's just absolutely phenomenal to see how that business has come back. This company was absolutely impacted by the shutdowns. Obviously, I don't think I need to explain that to anybody. Now we come down to revenue. So they uh, they recognize gross bookings. This is the amount of money that kind of comes in, but they only keep a certain percentage of that because essentially Uber is just simply a middleman kind of connecting these two. And so you see the revenues really strong on that freight side. Okay. All the way up to $1.8 billion revenue on that delivery side up to 2.4 billion dollars. It's still exceeding this mobility, but man, this mobility growth rate still really strong as well. We'd expect that business to continue to make a full recovery, hopefully at some point. Now let's jump over to the financials. We've got our statement of operations, essentially profit and loss over at Uber. We've got our three months ended here. The second column is our most recent quarter. So we went from 3.1 billion up to this 5.7 billion. We talked about how that 5.78 billion was good for 83% year over year revenue growth on that quarterly side. They give us a year end view since this was Q4. So you went from 11.1 all the way up to 17.5. So this company checks a lot of boxes. Okay. When you got a big multiple on this one from a price to sales, certainly price to earnings will show you this company doesn't even make any money. So you got a big multiple considering the market cap on this one, $74 billion. You're paying up huge, but you are growing these top line revenues. And we have to factor in this company is not firing on all cylinders based on still, you got a lot of limitations in terms of travel to a certain degree. So this company is doing a really nice job, but unfortunately it does come at a cost, okay? And here's our cost here. And we come down here to total cost and expenses. We see over the last year, you on a quarterly basis, you went 
from $4 billion up to $6.3 billion, so nearly $2.3 billion worth of additional cost. I'll remind you that we grew our top line by about $2.6 billion. So you guessed it. When you grow your top line 2.6 and you grow your expenses 2.3, you're not going to squeeze out a lot of profit. In fact, last year we lost $877 million. This year we lost $550 million. Again, this is on a quarterly basis. Things are moving in the right direction, though. You continue to move this in the right direction. You keep these costs. Look, we haven't really seen a lot of ballooning in these costs, okay? We do have cost of revenue go up, because you. but you would expect that, okay? As they have more revenue, they have to pay out more to the drivers. There's insurance. There's other costs there. But on the marketing side, you really only grew that by about 20%. So you grew your operating profits, or excuse me, you grew your revenues by 82%. So Uber grew their revenues 82%. I really like the fact that their sales and marketing only went up by about 20% from 1 billion up to 1.2. That is a very, very good sign. So while I'll criticize these companies in, in some sense, I do like how this business is scaling up. So you, there's some arguments to be made here. Now, is the valuation absolutely absurd? Okay, from a price to sales, price to earnings, price to anything. Okay, yeah, 74 billion is just absolutely nuts. But if you're looking out three, five, six, seven years, you assume that work from home basically starts to dissipate, well, this is a company that can be well positioned to capture a lot of that. Now, over the full year, you notice you went from $16 billion in cost up to $21.2 billion. You notice on our top line, so we grew our top line by about $6.3 billion on this bottom line, or excuse me, the cost, we grew that by about $5 billion. So yeah, our loss from operation improved over the last year. We lost $4.8 billion. Now we lost about a billion less to $3.8 billion. There's still a ways away over at Uber, but they're starting to get there, okay? It's getting a little bit better. From a cash flow perspective, over at Uber, they give you a year-end cash flow. The right-hand column is our most recent year. We pulled down a net loss of $570 million. We get to add back in things like massive amount of stock-based compensation, $1.1 billion worth of stock-based compensation over the last year. You still have negative cash flows on this company, but it's improved significantly over the previous year where you lost $2.7 billion. Now you lost just 445 million. So from a cash flow basis, this company probably should be cash flow positive. I would guess for the next calendar year, all things being equal, and we keep our fingers crossed and this company can really get back to normal from running their business. They did issue some term loan debt in the most recent quarter, about 1.5 billion of it. They did a little bit of fundraising and things like that. So this company is still in fundraising mode, but they've done a nice job with these financials. They hide behind a little bit these gross bookings and revenue. They don't really break you out kind of profits on these segments. None of these business units are likely profitable at the current time, but we're getting there from a quarterly basis to only lose, and I say only, $550 million off $5.7 billion worth of revenue. This company is really, really close. So I think as an investor, you can be excited about that for Uber. Now, from a technical perspective, this is as simple of a formation as you get from a technical perspective. When you get these data, downward channels, and I just did a video on Coke and Pepsi, they're actually in upward channels, okay? You are not buying the dip. I repeat, you are not buying the dip on Uber. I'll say it one more time. You are not buying the dip when you see this formation on a stock. You're actually buying the breakout. You are not trying to pick the low because you could have tried to pick it here. You could have tried to pick it here. You could have tried to pick it here, and you could have tried to pick it here. This company is making a series of lower lows and lower highs, and it is extraordinarily predictable going all the way back to May of 2021. What are you trying to, and most newer investors don't understand this. And, and look, I was a new investor at one time. I didn't understand this concept either. What are you trying to do? You're actually trying to buy the breakout above this. Okay. That is going to show you that these lower lows could potentially be over and we are ready to start an uptrend on this one. We need to get above, the in the current frame of time, we need to get above the $44, $45 range. Now, in the after-hour trade last night, the stock was actually up here in $44, $45, but we expected from it, I even responded to a comment on my channel because I didn't have time to do an Uber video yesterday. We had a birthday in my family. I just didn't have time. Well, I said I would expect a technical bounce here, a technical rejection back down to the bottom of the channel 
now because that's what it's been doing, quite frankly, for nearly a year now. So how do you know this is over? You need to get up over this ch uh, up downward channel line. So this upper green line, I'll change these colors so it's a little bit easier. So we'll change that to purple. So this purple line here, we need to get above that with some candles. And more specifically, we need to get above the last cluster of highs, which right now sit about $44 per share. Last night, like I said, the stock butted its head up against that. Butting its head up against it is not a candle above it. You want to close above that. And quite frankly, a professional trader would wait for two candles above that line right here. Get this one to 45, 46, probably even $47 per share. That will signal like, okay, this series of lower highs is over. And now maybe this stock will do something like get in an upper channel, okay? And we can buy it down at the bottom of the channel and this thing can traverse all the way back up because I tell you what, there's a lot of momentum back in this stock, okay? The next stop would be 48. The next stop with this cluster right here is at 52. You get past all of that, you've got these cluster of highs up here at 49 and 60. I don't mind giving up a couple of dollars to make sure I do, this stock doesn't continue to go down because right now it looks like this stock wants to go back down to 33. And again, do not buy it if it goes down to the bottom of the range because the pattern is, is just to come back up here to a lower set of highs at 38 and go down to an even lower set of lows down here to 29. Until the stock gets out of that technical pattern, you don't buy this one. You don't buy the dip. This is not a dip buying opportunity. This is not a dip buying setup. Just understand that we are in a downward channel making lower sets of lows, lower sets of highs. You wait until you break out above the previous lower sets of highs. That is your signal that potentially it's not guaranteed, but you have a much higher probability of success on a purchase on a stock like this. If you actually wait for it to actually go higher, instead of buying it lower. A lot of newer investors don't understand that, but hopefully I explain that to you so you can understand that. Now let's move on to Lyft. Over the last year, the stock's down about 18%. This company reported their earnings just a few weeks ago, I believe last week. This company has a much smaller market cap than Uber, just a $14 million market cap on this one, but we do have a price to earnings basis on of Lyft at about 71. Now their earnings came out $969 million worth of revenue. Obviously Uber's at closer to to 5 billion. So they're five times the company on that revenue side. They've got nearly a five times bigger market cap, but we've got a strong growth rate on this one. 70%. Okay. You got a really nice, strong revenue growth and that beat expectations by about $29 million when this company reported their earnings on February 8th, just two days ago, actually. Now, what I want to talk about with Lyft I don't like how they 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 kind of hide some things in their financials. First of all, when you came to their press release, they just gave you year-end results. Nothing wrong with that. I don't mind that. But I liked when companies, even when it's their Q4, break it out from a quarterly basis so we find this Q4. I had to kind of dig into some slides to actually find it. Here's what I want to show you with Lyft. So what they're going to do is they're going to show you from a operations perspective that they did this $969 million worth of revenue. We showed that to you over here. That's seven percent year over year growth on that. Even quarter over quarter, you went from 860 up to 969. Again, as the recovery continues to happen here in the United States and around the world, these companies are definitely benefiting and will be benefactors of that. Absolutely. Okay. What they show you here is this company from a non-GAAP loss operating perspective, they show you that they had $45 million worth of profits with $924 million worth of costs. So you take this 969 and you minus off 924 and you actually get a profit on this one at $45 million, but these are adjusted numbers. And what do they adjust out is over $122 million of changes to liabilities for insurance required by regulatory agencies attributable to historical periods. So they stripped out $122 million worth of cost that you have to recognize from a gap perspective. I'll let you to decide if you want to strip those out. What I would actually do is when we come to the financials, just analyze this company from a cash flow perspective. Okay. 
okay? And maybe some of these are non-cash. Maybe this insurance stuff, it's not all cash. It just has to be recognized. But this company kind of strips it out up here, and I think it confuses investors, quite frankly. I don't think they really should do that. Now, from a year-ended perspective, I like how Lyft gives us 19, 20 over 21, because as we know, 19 was a little bit more normalized year. 2020, everything hit the fan. And then 2021, a little bit in between, okay? We're not all the way back to 2019, but it's a little bit better than 2020 was, certainly, okay? So back in 2019, we had $3.6 billion worth of revenue. We have not gotten back to there, but we're close. And more than likely, I would assume in 2022, this company will far to exceed what they did in 2019. We see year over year, you went from 2.3 up to $3.2 billion worth of revenue. Now, this it, everything here is from a gap perspective on this side. So from this cost perspective, we see how these really did a nice job controlling the cost year over year, despite the strong revenue growth. So you grew your revenues by, it appears, over $900 million over the last year. But look at your cost. They barely moved. 4.1 billion up to 4.2. And then notice over 2019, while we're not quite back up to 3.6 billion, we're sitting at 3.2. Look at our costs. They went down from 6.3 to 4.3. So I like what Lyft is doing, okay? And you see here from the loss from operations perspective, 1.8 down to a billion dollars. They've done a nice job. Again, on slightly more revenue in 2019, they lost way more money. In fact, nearly double over $2.7 billion worth of losses in 2019, about a billion dollars this year. This company, just like Uber, is moving in the right direction. Now, what we want to do, though, is look at cash flows, okay? Because we understand with these companies, they're growing, they're doing a lot of different things. They have a massive amount of stock-based compensation, $724 million in the most recent year. Last year, you're at 565. Look all the way back in 2019, over 1.5, nearly $1.6 billion worth of stock-based compensation. So that's starting to normalize just a little bit, okay? And so you come down here from a net cash provided by the operating activities, you were negative 1.3 billion. Now you're you're still negative 100 million dollars, but you're back to where you were back in 2019, and you pulled down a better net loss number. In 2019, they lost 2.6 billion. Now they lost only a billion and they gave out less in stock-based compensation. So you have a nice, really nice cash flow from operation. Look, they're not profitable from an operating perspective. They're not profitable from a net income. They're not profitable from a cash flow perspective. But if you're looking two or three years down the road, I think I can see how you can get there, especially with a $14 billion market cap on this company. I could see how they could get there in a year or two, maybe 18 to 24 months on this company. I could see how it could make a little bit of sense. Now, from a technical perspective, this is as easy as it gets. Just like Uber, we are in a down channel on this one. You do not, I repeat, you do not buy the dip when you're stock. It doesn't matter if it's Lyft, if it's GE, Microsoft, Facebook, I don't care what the stock is. When they make this technical pattern where you're making a series of lower highs and a series of lower lows, you do not, I repeat, you do not buy the dip. In fact, you do the opposite. You actually buy the rip. You buy the rip up above the previous highs. Why is that? Because you're making a series of lower lows. If you bought the dip back here, bought the dip back here, bought the dip back here, you would be underwater on this investment. And right now we have to assume with Lyft, it comes to the top of the channel, goes back down, will go back up to the top of the channel, but won't increase its level over the previous highs. We'll make another lower set of highs and come back and you guessed it, make another lower sets of lows. You let the stock do this until it proves itself otherwise. The way it proves itself otherwise, it breaks above this red line right here. In fact, I'm going to change this red line to purple. So we have our upper trend line right here, okay, in purple. You've got to break above this with some candles, okay? And I'm not talking about wick through it, just like it did back here in November, just like it did back here in June. Sometimes it does it in the after hours, after earnings, stuff like that. You need to close above it. And a professional trader would actually wait for two candles to close above it. And the second candle needs to actually be higher than the previous candles. The candles need to look exactly like this. You need to have one here, maybe close at 53. The next day or the next couple of days,
days, even maybe the next week, you could look at this on a weekly chart, however you want to look at it. Well, you need to close at like 55 and then maybe a third candle at 56. That is where you buy because that could be signaling that we are in store for a reversal with lift and lift could, instead of being in a downward channel, could reverse into some kind of upward channel. It might not be this steep, okay? It could be a much flatter upper channel, but at least now we buy at this level and we watch the stock walk up, whereas we are watching the stock walk down and you just let it walk down until it proves itself over this channel line. I don't care if you're looking at Lyft. I don't care if you're looking at Uber. We looked at Corsair Gaming the other day. We looked at Coke earlier today. Coke is making the opposite pattern. It is in an upper trend line, okay? You wouldn't want to buy it up here at the top because it's likely to pull down. Same thing with Lyft, just the opposite. We're not buying it down here unless you want to play the quick trade on this one. You want to play the buy buy down here, sell it up here, go ahead, but put that trade in. Do not turn it into a long position. Also set a stop loss just in case this thing turns against you. That was Uber and Lyft. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Good luck with your investments.